Hey guys, what is going on? NK here, and today we're going to be looking at Battlefield 1 and its PC performance, and we're going to be testing it on the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X 8GB with an i7-4790 at 4.0GHz. As always, you can have a look at the full system specs down below in the description. And with that being said, we are using the latest NVIDIA drivers for these benchmarks. The drivers I'm using are the 376.19 released on the 5th of December, so go ahead and make sure your drivers are all up to date. The drivers are of course important because they help to optimise gameplay and make it smoother. Before I begin, one issue I want to discuss are the nature of the average FPS benchmark scores. They would vary quite a lot and it was pretty weird because usually in games the averages are quite consistent, however in Battlefield for some reason they would vary by as much as 15 frames. I used fraps to get the average frames per second as well as the minimum and maximum frame values and I went into a whole bunch of different game modes to try and get a rough and consistent idea of how the game fares in terms of FPS. Finally though the game mode and number of players didn't seem to have an impact on the FPS but it was more the maps and their different dynamic weather events such as sandstorms or fogs which seemed to have a bigger impact. But besides this, I was very impressed with the card once again. I had the MSI Afterburner overlay in game so I could see the frames of BF1 consistently. Not only this, but I also had the temp of the CPU and GPU in game as well to see how hot the card and CPU were running and whether or not BF1 is a very tasking game, which it clearly isn't. The card was running super cool at around 65 to 71 degrees Celsius. I haven't seen it go above that myself. Even in terms of GPU utilization, I never actually saw it go above 70%, which is really good. It becomes even better when considering that this was like the absolute top and rarely hit this much utilization. It was usually much lower in the ranges of 60 to 65%. But before we have a look at the FPS statistics and numbers, let's have a look at the options menu to see what options I'm running BF1 at. Now going into the video option menu, you can see that I am running Battlefield 1 at a resolution of 1920x1080p. Make sure that the resolution you have matches your monitor's resolution in order to make the quality as sharp as possible. Battlefield also allows you to change the hertz at which the game runs. You definitely want the highest refresh rate, but then again, if you can't get the same amount of frames, then it might make the game seem like it's lagging because eventually the monitor may draw on really old or really new frames, which is a problem, especially in an FPS. Moving on we then have VSync off, this is because it limits the amount of frames that your GPU will produce and it skews the figures which is what we don't want, we want the raw FPS numbers so we'll keep that off. Having said that we then have the FOV sliders for both your infantry and vehicles, this was definitely needed as when I first started playing it's set to a default value of 50 and it just made me feel really sick because it felt way too close and restrictive so I just needed to have my FOV slider to be much higher. I feel comfortable with 70 for both, I feel like they're good values, I may test out other values but for now I'm comfortable with these. Moving into the advanced tab, I'm running this in DX11 simply because I don't feel the graphical improvement offered in DX12 justifies the performance hit that the card takes. It's a really minimal difference at the cost of significant performance. We also have everything set to Ultra. I've made sure that everything is max as I've just been flicking through the options and comparing it to the Ultra preset. Besides this, we have the resolution scale at 100%. I wouldn't advise having it higher simply because it only super scales at the cost of frames and there isn't honestly much difference to be had that I would personally say is worth doing. But of course, that's personal preference. I have GPU memory restriction on because I don't want Battlefield to use more memory than is available and for some reason only 6.7 gig of VRAM is available on the 1070. I did turn this off for a while and found minimal difference so it made sense to have it on for the sake of game stability. So with all that nonsense out of the way let's jump into the benchmark figures. Now, as you can see in the top left the FPS of BF1 with the MSI 1070 does very well at ultra settings. The game seems to be super easy for the card to run with an average frame rate of 107, a minimum frame rate of 87 and a maximum frame rate of 201. The 201 FPS number comes from the little cutscenes you get every now and again while playing the operations game mode which is where I predominantly did these benchmarks. The maximum I saw in game and playing was probably around 120 to 130 but needless to say the average over 107 is very nice, I've never gone below 60 or even 75 for that matter. While you're playing in fog or in a sandstorm the workload for the GPU becomes a little bit more intense and so then the GPU was only outputting an average frame rate of around 95 which is still more than enough for a good experience. I do have to say though the difference in graphical quality between medium and ultra settings isn't too big, you can't really see much difference at all. I played on medium settings for a long time and when I finally switched to ultra it was quite underwhelming. To me I feel like the difference between medium and ultra settings in terms of graphical quality is minimal considering that you lose about 20-30 to 30 frames. This is important because when playing PC games there's always that question of graphics versus performance so you balance the two to give you the best graphical quality and performance. But in this case I wouldn't deem ultra settings worth taking that performance hit for, especially if the GPU you have isn't able to smoothly run BF1 in all situations if you did. It would just be easier to run it at medium settings because you honestly aren't missing out on much. With all of that being said and done, as you have probably noticed, the FPS numbers and benchmarks were all based on the multiplayer. No doubt most of us play Battlefield for the multiplayer and only a small minority ever really touch the campaign. But it's always good to include these numbers in terms of FPS and that's exactly what we're going to do. I've done the exact same for the campaign in terms of benchmarks, including the minimum, maximum and average frames. 
Just in case anyone was wondering, all the same options have been kept, nothing has been changed whatsoever. Now personally the reason I included this is to help me understand where it is that affects the FPS most. Like I said earlier in the video, it wasn't the player numbers or game mods which impacted the FPS, but it was dynamic weather events that caused the lower FPS, which is probably down to the increase in graphical load. Now before I did these benchmarks, I did expect similar frames in the campaign compared to the multiplayer, however I was very surprised to learn that after conducting the benchmarks, the average frames per second turned out to be 127 with a minimum of 106 and a maximum of 152. Note that this time though the maximum frames were genuinely done in game and not part of a cutscene. Funnily though this time the cutscenes were fixed at 50 FPS, which is pretty weird, I would have thought it would have been 60 at least, they do look pretty choppy at 50 and pushing them 10 frames higher would have helped make the World War 1 experience and gameplay all the more immersive. But considering how well the card holds up at ultra settings in both the multiplayer and campaign aspects of the game, I am genuinely more than happy with its performance. I definitely would recommend this card to anyone out there who isn't sure about which card to get. If you're after a 1070 card then definitely pick up the MSI Gaming X version. The temps, noise and just the customer service of MSI are awesome and all round brilliant. But that's it for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my other Gears of War 4 benchmark video to see how that fares too. Thumbs up the video and subscribe for all your gaming related needs and info. This is NK signing off.